Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles, where today we're featuring a name that some of you may recognise. This is Maltese Knight in the British Tier 7 Premium Battleship, HMS Hood. This is not the first time we've seen Maltese Knight on this channel, although the last time we saw him it wasn't in the most flattering of circumstances. He was in, I think, um... Oh, what's that? British Tier 10 Light Cruiser that isn't the Minotaur. The, the Edgar, that's it, the new thing. And to be completely fair, he was doing extremely well, at least by the standards of everybody else on his team. <laughs> he was in the enemy team in somebody else's battle. Um, and yeah, top scoring, ship on his team. Uh, not nearly good enough, of course. Uh, the rest of his team absolutely sucked. Today, however, the shoe is on the other foot. Or is it? I mean, yeah, it probably is, otherwise I wouldn't be featuring this replay at all, would I? I, um, yeah. Yeah, you should probably stop trying to do suspense jingles, you're not very good at it. <laughs> okay, fine, whatever. Anyway, yeah. Oh, oh, this is important. You see the dive bombers coming in from the Lervenhart, the enemy carrier? Watch the T-22. Boom! <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. That wasn't funny at all. Yeah. So, yeah, you should have just dodged. <laughs> Again, don't know why I'm laughing. It's not funny at all. So we're a minute into the game and the T-22 has already been ruined. And, you know, I often say the threat to destroyers posed by carriers isn't so much in the direct damage that they do, it's in the fact that they spot you. And, um, yeah, I think it might actually be the direct damage that they do. Now... Pay attention to enemy aircraft during the course of this battle, by the way, because we're going to be seeing a lot more of that Erich Löwenhardt. Much more than we like, that's for sure. To be fair, that enemy carrier player is pretty good, as we'll see as this battle unfolds. Oh, hello. Did you just run aground on the rocks? So, HMS Hood. Unlike certain other Tier 7 battleships, armed with 15-inch guns. You all know the one I'm talking about. We don't need to mention it by name, again. But if you're struggling for a clue, it starts with G and ends in Nizer now. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. Unlike certain other Tier 7 battleships on with 15-inch guns, when the hood shoots at things, it tends to hit them. Not least of which because it's got eight 15-inch guns. Oh, look, the T-22's dead. Well, I'm surprised it took that long with the amount of health he had remaining. No, oh, it was the, and it was the, it was the carrier who finished him, came back with rocket planes and finished the job. So, the carrier now has one destroyer kill to his name and the first blood award. Oh, hang on a second, a fur attacker. Oh, that, oh, he's turning, he's turning. Nice, wait for it. Wait for it, wait for it, let him steady on the course. Shots out. Oh, come on, baby. Daddy needs a new pair of shoes. Boom! <laughs> like I said, when the hood shoots at things, it does tend to hit. Hang on a minute, Jingles. So, it's alright for Maltese Knight to do that to an enemy cruiser from across the map, but somehow it's wrong when a carrier does it? Well, I don't believe I really have to explain this again, do I? Okay, apparently I do. Short answer, as he drops some depth charges on the submarine that just tried to ping him. Oh, we'll talk about submarine pings in a minute as well. Yes, it is fine for him to be able to do that to a cruiser from across the map, even though it wasn't really from across the map. And no, it is not fine that carriers can do the same thing, or worse. Here we go, thought experiment for you. Take your hood, park it behind an island at the back of the map, where the carrier's hiding, and then let me know by the end of the battle how much spotting you've done and how much damage you've done to those ships that you spotted. It's not quite the same, is it? In order to do that sort of thing in anything but a carrier, you kind of have to expose yourself to a certain amount of risk. The carrier does not. Oh, and there's the submarine ping again. Oh no, I've been pinged by a submarine sonar. There will be homing torpedoes coming. No problem, said Wargaming. Just activate your damage control. And what's the cooldown on damage control? A minute and a half in the case of the hood. And how long does the submarine have to wait before it can ping you again? 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah, I know. And the only reason those torpedoes didn't rip Maltese Knight a new one, despite the fact that he was pinged, was because the Gadiamada sank the submarine. 
And I know that doesn't make a huge amount of sense either. I mean, the torpedoes are either homing or not. It's not like they're wire guided or anything. They'd it shouldn't matter if, but there are so many things about submarine implementation in World of Warships that just make no sense whatsoever. This is just another one of them. Still not as bad as carriers though. But then again, I suppose that depends on your perspective. Are you in a battleship? If the answer is yes, then yeah, submarines probably are just as bad as carriers. You know, the current state of carriers in World of Warships kind of reminds me of what artillery used to be like in World of Tanks. Does anybody remember the bad old days when artillery could fire armor-piercing shells? I do. I remember one match on Sound River where I was in my IS-7. Top tier, obviously. It's a tier 10 heavy tank. And this was back in the days when there wasn't a lot of competition in the tier 10 heavy tank bracket. And the IS-7 was an extremely strong tank. And I'm parked up in a lovely hold-down position around the corner of a rock. Whole bunch of enemies in front of me. I'm about to activate beast mode. And then BOOM! Dead. One-shotted. T-92 firing a 155mm armor-piercing shell. Comfortably hidden at the back of the map. Yeah. Fun and engaging, it was not. See, I don't mind taking damage from ships that I can see. In fact, I don't even mind taking damage from ships that are exploiting cover, smoke, concealment, or whatever. Doing that sort of thing properly requires a bit of skill on the part of the player doing it. And there are counters to it. Somebody's hidden in a smoke screen. Radar counters it, hydro counters it, just getting close enough counters it, or simply break line of sight whoever's spotting you for the guy inside the smoke screen. Same deal goes with people exploiting island cover. There are ways of getting around it. How do you get around being spotted by a dive bomber? Apparently you just dodge. <laughs> I mean, that is pretty much your only option, because unless the planets and stars all line up in perfect alignment, you certainly can't shoot the buggers down. Ah, uh, anyway. I mean, you know, feel free to disagree. But you're wrong. <laughs> right. Okay, anyway, enough. Let's concentrate on the battle. Um, it's even doing all right, actually. They still have three of their destroyers and their submarine. It's not something the enemy team can boast. They've only lost three. They've killed four. Maltese Knight, I mean, aside from those spectacular citadels, he hasn't done a massive amount of damage. And then, oh, look at that. The enemy carrier just killed another destroyer. You know, bitching and moaning notwithstanding, I do have to stop and give some credit here to the enemy carrier player because he is really good. Taking out a destroyer and a carrier is nowhere near as easy as it used to be, even in a carrier like the Eric Lovenhart, which is better at it than most. He is making it look way easier than it actually is. Speaking of enemy destroyers, right as Maltese Knight gets his first kill, this T-22 is making all kinds of mistakes here. The further Maltese Knight goes past the island, the further the T-22 had to come out in order to get a torpedo firing angle. And, well, kill number two. And a close quarters expert award. That's not something you often see in a hood. It's, it's, it's not known for its secondaries. Shots out at the Lazzo. Never really sure how you pronounce the name of that thing. I mean, I know it's... Oh, shit. <laughs> Ow. Yeah, that one hurt. I mean, it's it's Russian, so it's probably not pronounced Lazzo. But every time I see it, I'm reminded of the Italian football team, Lazio. I'm not a huge football fan. But in the 90s, British television used to cover the Italian Football League. And when you're in the Royal Navy, whether you like it or not, you end up watching a lot of football because that's just what is on the TV in the mess deck. And the T... Oh, shit. The Colorado just got clapped there as well. Oh, and by the way, the Lovenhardt just got his third kill. Dive-bombed the uh, Bayern. And now he's turning his attention to Maltese Knight. The Hood, by the way, has the defensive AA consumable. And he's just used it. Guess how many aircraft he shot down? Two. <laughs> <laughs> totally worth it um, but yeah the one thing that I remember about this uh, Italian football league coverage on British TV was at the beginning during the credits somebody would always be shouting Lazio!" so every time I see that Russian cruiser that's what I think of 
Look, I didn't say it was an interesting story. <laughs> it was, um, <laughs> but it was a story. <laughs> right, anyway, uh, things are looking actually pretty good. I mean, the team have got a decent points lead. They now have two of the three cap circles and they have a kill lead. And the Dunker Q up there, yes, I know, is doing the smart thing because he's just run out of friends. He's trying to run up north to link up with the rest of his team. So let's see what Maltese Knight can do about that. He is spotted, of course. The hood isn't particularly stealthy. Shots out. And he does have the advantage here, not least of which because he's got more and bigger guns. But when you're angling away... Oh, that was some pretty lousy dispersion. The thing about the Dunker Q is all of its guns are in the front. So when it's running away, it can't shoot back. At some point, he is, however, going to have to turn north. Otherwise, he's going to run into the map border. And that should give Maltese Knight the chance. I mean, I like the Dunkirk, but it's it's not very well armoured. And these are 15-inch armour-piercing shells. It is reasonably fast, though. Oh, that was... yeah, not bad. Not great, but not terrible either. The problem is, it's not as fast as the hood. The hood can do 32 and a half knots, although it takes a while in a straight line to build up to that kind of speed, but it's definitely faster than the Dunkirk. And with the brisk skill activated, he's, he's doing 36 knots. So the Dunkirk is never going to escape. And it looks like he's realised it. As he's... actually, this could be pretty bad. Maltese Knight isn't given a flat broadside, but, well, that could have been a lot worse. It's worse for the Dunkirk. <laughs> and oh, we interrupt this broadcast to bring you some important news. The enemy carrier, the Erich Lervenhart, has just nailed his third destroyer with dive bombers again. Like I said, that guy is good. He is making this look way easier than it actually is. And that's his fourth kill, by the way, because he sank the enemy by urn as well, again with dive bombers. Dunkirk's trying to heal up. And he is being forced to turn north now. And this is going to be really bad for him. Because that's just given everybody more ship to shoot at. He's going to be lucky to survive this. Oh, he does survive it. But there's the high caliber award with 116,000 damage done. And I'm pretty sure... Oh, the Gadjamada took a bit of a clapping there as well. You know there are aircraft overhead, right? If you have a smokescreen, now would be a great time to use it. Or you could, you know, just dodge. <laughs> There is an enemy Geniser now in play. He's just sunk the Colorado. The enemy team are... Uh, I mean, they're still behind, but not by much. They're a bit more behind now. There goes the Gadjimada smokescreen. Right as the dive bombers come in. Oh, very, very narrowly missed him. And then the Gadjimada suffers from a sudden and potentially fatal rush of shit to the brain. Why are you leaving your smokescreen? Oh, right, yeah. Enemy carrier spotted. Uh, this is something that is actually quite common. People just tend to lose control of their brains whenever they actually see the carrier and have the opportunity to shoot at it, because it happens so infrequently. So the Gadjimada has pretty much just signed his own death warrant here by leaving his smokescreen in order to shoot at the carrier with his piddly little 127mm guns. Maltese Knight has activated his defensive fire, but it doesn't stop the carrier from making two torpedo runs on the destroyer, because of course it doesn't. And... Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Let's not forget, there is still an enemy destroyer alive, and I think he might be just up ahead. And the Gadjimada, because he's got his blinkers on and he can't see anything other than the carrier in front of him, just sailed to within secondary range of the Geniser now. So it's three on three again, but the second these 15 inch guns reload, I suspect it may be three on two. Enemy dive bombers give uh, Maltese Knight a good clapping, but then his 15 inch armor piercing shells arrive and the carrier is down. But if you think he's out, <laughs> you must be new here. There's the Akatsuki, going way too fast to stay concealed inside his smoke screen. But at least one of his torpedo salvers is going to connect. Two torpedo hits, and that's left Maltese Knight burning and flooding with his damage control on cooldown. But the Akatsuki has just gotten clapped. There's kill number seven. And here come the torpedo bombers. <laughs> what do you mean the carrier's dead? He is, but that doesn't make any difference. Just managed to avoid them. Trying to get those rear guns swung around to deal with the Gneiser now and get kill number eight. Oh shit. And 
reload the guns. No, no, sorry. That's quite enough fun for one day. You just got arrested by the FUD police. I mean, the noise now is going to go down anyway. But that should have been eight kills. But hey, seven kills, a high caliber, and 166,000 damage isn't bad in the tier seven battle. And he'd have gotten more too, if it hadn't been for that pesky carrier. So that's not far short of 3,000 base experience for Maltese Knight in HMS Hood. And unsurprisingly, the enemy carrier was top of his team too, with a Kraken Unleashed and more than 1,200 base XP on a defeat. I mean, you have to feel a certain amount of sympathy for him. And credit where credit's due, he was very, very good. But sympathy notwithstanding, I do feel like the kill went to the right team, because can you imagine getting seven kills and losing? <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have to imagine it. We've seen it happen. Just not today. Anyway, Maltese Knight in HMS Hood. It's nice to see him again. And it's even nicer to see him on the winning team for a change. <laughs> uh, if you want to see more, I'll put a link to his Twitch channel down below in the video description. In the meantime, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.